Well, we are waking up to another beautiful morning here. The weather has been just perfect. Just getting a leisurely start to the day here. Letting the sun warm things up. Okay, this is Sunday breakfast. We did an egg, hash brown, bacon, and cheese sandwich. One of our last mornings here. We'll be moving on soon. Hey, we're out doing a hike around Dogtown Lake. It is a beautiful spring day. I think the high is supposed to be just around 70 degrees. It is just beautiful. So we're about halfway around the lake, just taking a little break. Kel's making up some soup for us. We're just gonna hang out. We'll give you a little shot of where we're hanging out here. Got this nice little spot in the trees right next to the lake. Nice log to sit on. Kel's got a nice little flat rock to, hear you, to use as a kitchen. What you making us? Just a little snack. A little Lipton nothing, soup? Nothing gourmet, but nice. out here everything tastes good. Exactly. Quite a few people out fishing on the lake today. Saw a couple guys pulling fish in. Beautiful day to be outside. Cheers. Think. Well, good morning. We are coming at you from the camper van this morning. We are still in the Kaibab National Forest here in northern Arizona. Today is a move camp day, so we're getting prepped to uh, getting up early to get prepped to pull on out of here and get to our next camp destination. We'll be doing a resupply, stopping in a town to get groceries and supplies, water and all that on the way. So uh, yesterday evening, spent a good portion of the evening getting things put away outside. I don't have a very elaborate outside camp setup. I've got a little fold-up table, my little fold-up charcoal grill. I use a little pop-up fire pit, camp chair, and uh, that's pretty much it. I usually have some water jugs that I set outside to keep them from cluttering up inside the van. So it's basically just get that stuff put away, which I did yesterday evening. So this morning, it comes down to just tidying up inside the van, getting all my tabletop surfaces cleared so stuff isn't flying around in transport. And uh, what else? Yeah, hitch up the trailer, get the motorcycle loaded up, and pull on out. All right, let's do this. It's gotten quite a bit more populated here in this area. When I showed up just two weeks ago, it was uh, I was one of the few campers here. Now there are quite a few people rolled in here. Weekends were pretty busy. We've got a really nice clear day on our hands, except for the high winds. There are some high wind warnings, so I'm hoping it's not too bad on the road. Typically don't try to drive in high winds, but we kind of don't have a choice today. and We don't have too far to drive. I think we're just going to cover, oh, maybe 120 miles or so, 130. And they came in and graded this road, so now there's a pretty big... Pretty big little bump here at the entry point of this drive. Let's take it real slow. Kind of an angle. Oh, there goes my camera. Goodbye, Kaibab National Forest. We will see you again at another time. Away we go. Rolling through downtown Williams, Arizona. It is quiet this morning. Weekend mornings about this time. There are people all over these streets. And gas prices have risen since we've been here over the two weeks. Uh, about 10 cents. 
was uh, 385 up here, or 375, now it's 385 at the Maverick over near the interstate. And we looked ahead, the area we're heading to, gas prices are even more. So we're gonna uh, go ahead and gas up here. Kelly and I did do the uh, train ride from Williams to the Grand Canyon yesterday. The first time I ever done that, been wanting to do it for a while. And uh, it was cool. We did the economy car, I think it was just around $60. AAA gives you a little discount, and uh, it was nice. It's a good, it's a long ride. It's a good two-hour ride up there, even though it's only 60 miles or so. So we enjoyed it. We did a little hike at the Grand Canyon, and then you right take the train back. It makes for a full day. It's cool. Okay, well we spent a good couple hours on Interstate 40 heading west. Got off here at the base of the Hualapai Mountain Range. Uh, this area around the mountains is, uh, a lot of it is managed by the Bureau of Land Management. So you can come out here and camp for up to 14 days, no fee. Totally primitive, pack it in, pack it out. So we're stocked up. A couple things in the area I really wanted to explore and check out, so we're going to find a base camp here, get posted up, and be able to do break camp and do some exploring. Well, we are out here in the boonies. Pretty rough little dirt road here, but totally doable if you just take it real slow. Yeah, nice little clearing up here in the trees. Went from the ponderosa pines to the junipers and pinions. Let's see if I can get situated here. Gotta get out and walk this. I'm seeing some little spots like there were little fire pits. I wanna make sure that it's not full of nails. Oftentimes they are. Check it out. All right, well, we're getting settled in at camp here. We found a nice little spot on this hillside. The sun is shining. We got a little bit of clouds in the sky. It's kind of nice to get a little break from the sun every now and then. It is warming up. It's uh, going to be a little bit warmer here. I think we're at just about 5,000 feet elevation at the base of the Hualapai Mountains here in Arizona. We are on Bureau of Land Management land, so we can camp here for free up to 14 days. We're amongst the junipers and the pinyon pines here, really nice. We'll turn the camera around here and give you a glimpse of the mountains. And we got a nice view of the mountains right over here. And a pretty secluded spot here, not many campers up this way, so it's nice to have this area to ourselves. A little bit of remnants of people coming up here and shooting. There was quite a few shotgun shells on the ground, so I uh, took some time to pick those up. A little bit of broken glass over here. So we'll try to do some tidying up while we're here, leave it cleaner for the next folks that want to come out. Hopefully they won't trash it. And yeah, just enjoying being in a new environment here. We're going to get out today and do some exploring. We're actually going to ride our motorcycles up into those mountains and check the area out. So we'll bring you guys along, see what we can find. All right, well, we made it up to this Wild Cow Springs campground. It's pretty remote. There's no cell service out here. It is a, a Bureau of Land Management campground that is $8 a night, and there's absolutely nobody here. Uh, there's a couple vault toilets, pretty clean, uh, trash cans, and some nice little sites right along the little spring here, little creek. 
Very nice. It's an example of one of the sites. They all have a steel fire ring, a little picnic table, and most of them are creek side. There's a couple that aren't. Just a short little walk down to the nice little creek. Not a whole lot of water running, but it's running nice and clear. There are no other water sources other than this, so you could technically bring a water filter purifier and have water here. But it's a pretty rough road coming in here. It's a recommended high clearance for a wheel drive. I think you could do it with just high clearance. Up just above uh, 5,000 feet, real nice. So we packed a lunch, we're gonna hang out. Although it does say no day use, there's nobody here. So we're just gonna have a quick sandwich and be on our way. Well, we had a nice little lunch break here at this uh, wild cow springs campground. Really nice. If you're looking for a nice remote campground that's only $8 a night, check it out. Do your research though. There is a rough road coming in, so uh, you got to keep that in mind. Getting a nice gloss on my forehead here. All right, we're going to motor on and see what else we can find. <laughs> All right, so we're back from our exploring adventure. It's time to get some dinner going. It actually got really windy. It clouded over and actually rained for a little bit out here. It's cleared right back up again. It was just like about a 20 minute event. So we're gonna get some dinner going in here. We'll show you what we're up to. All right, so I'm gonna try something new. I saw this a few different places on the internet, taco spaghetti. That's right, taco spaghetti. We're gonna use some ground beef and some uh, standard taco seasoning in a packet some onions, a little bit of bell pepper, some canned diced tomatoes, of course spaghetti, all in one pan. This is going to be a one pan meal, so very nice for camping. Only dirty up one dish, and a good hearty meal, and I hope it's good. I'm sure it will be. I love tacos. I love spaghetti. Let's see how it turns out. Well, I diced up about a half an onion and just a little bit of bell pepper I had left over. Wished I would have had a little more bell pepper, but that's fine. So we're going to start getting those onions cook down a little bit, then I'm going to add the ground beef. I have a very lean ground beef, so there's not going to be much fat to drain. If so, I'll just probably spoon it out. But yeah, we'll get this stuff going. So I let those onions cook down a little bit, just pushed them aside, added my ground beef. So I'm getting that crumbled up and browned there. Just about done. So I'm going to go ahead and add that packet of taco seasoning. I'm using the McCormick here, the original taco. That's a half packet there. I have another one I might need to open up and use. We'll get that mixed in and add a little bit of water. Just add a little bit of water here for that seasoning. I'm using a can of petite diced tomatoes here. I'm actually thinking I'm not gonna put the whole can in. I might go with like half. Rotel would probably work good for this. It's got the chilies in it. Let's stir that in, see how much that looks like there. Yeah, I think that's good. I don't want to go too crazy with the tomatoes. Save these for something else. Okay, we're getting close to time to add our pasta. I'm just going to use regular spaghetti noodles. I'll show you how we do that. Next step, just using about a half of a pound box of the regular spaghetti. I snapped it in half and threw it right in there. And then I'm just gonna pour in some water till it looks like it's enough to cover it. Probably good right about there. I shove them down in there. I'm gonna cover that and just let that sit. And then every few minutes, open it up, kind of break them up a little bit so they don't stick, stir it around. The most part, it's going to be uh, kind of set it and forget it. See how this turns out. It might be too much water. We'll see. Okay, so here's how we're looking after about, oh, maybe eight or so minutes. The pasta definitely takes longer than cooking it in boiling water. 
Um, but I think this is just going to be a lot better. It's going to absorb all that flavor. And of course, you're just using one pot here. So I think maybe another probably seven or eight minutes. And I think I added just the right amount of water. I don't want it too soupy when it's done. Okay, let's check it out. See how we're coming along. Gave it a couple stirs. I did end up adding a can of these Hatch Mild Green Chilies. Mix those in there. And it's kind of wanting to stick a little bit in the middle there when I left it too long. So I think uh, every now and then stirring it up and look at the pastas absorb most of the water. So it's not soupy. So the final touch is going to be shredded cheese all over the top. Fresh dice, uh, chopped cilantro. Maybe a little green onion and we'll serve it up and maybe top it with a little avocado and sour cream let me check one of these noodles here pretty darn close i think by the time the cheese is melted and that it'll be ready so i'm gonna do it up top it off with some shredded cheddar cheese and chopped cilantro a little green onion in there i'm gonna top it let that cheese melt and it will be ready to serve up okay we got that cheese melted oh big whiff of cilantro and I researched a couple of recipes online about this. And if you want to do like a vegetarian version, uh, substitute the ground beef for black beans and uh, go that route. I was going to add black beans to this, but it's already so much food. I think it's going to be great as is. And there we are. That's the finished product. It is looking and smelling good to me anyway. Went ahead and drizzled a little bit of sour cream on there, topped it with some diced avocado. You know what we got to do next. Okay, here we go. I mean, I know this is gonna be good. We actually made a taco pizza the other day and it was really good. Same kind of idea. Come on, tell us. It's what you'd think it would be. It's nice and hearty, tastes like taco pasta. Really like it. I like the addition of the avocado there. You're gonna to have to try it. Let us know what you think. All right, we can't just go on my take on it. What do you think? Would you eat it again? Is it good? I would totally eat it again. Not bad, huh? It's exact, like you said, it's exactly what you think it would taste like. Nice and hearty. Yep. All right, we got to eat. Rub. We got to eat. Bye. Well, thank you for being here. I appreciate you joining me in another video. We'll see you guys soon in the next one. Take care. Peace.